how about four Wuhan coronavirus lockdown statistics that you may not have heard about? 55% of businesses forced to shut down between March 1st and July 10th due to these mandatory lockdowns will not be coming back. Those businesses are closed forever. Over 200,000 Britons are expected to die as a result of government-mandated lockdowns. You know, normally, only communist regimes are able to kill their people at such a huge scale. Now, according to Stanford University epidemiologist Scott Atlas, the lockdowns will cause more years of life lost than the virus itself, right here in the United States. For every 1,000 lives lost to the virus, a corresponding 1,000 lives lost to the lockdown will destroy more life years than those who died from the virus because the median age of the people who die from the virus is 80 years old, while the median age of the people who die as a result of the lockdown, like those who die from suicide, those who die from substance abuse or depression and and, and poverty, is much, much lower. And finally, according to the United Nations, 10,000 children around the world will die every month due to the economic devastation caused by the lockdowns. And look, there's a one-word response for these brain-dead liberals who squawk on incessantly that more people would have died of the disease if it wasn't for the lockdowns. That one word, Sweden. Now, Sweden avoided a hard lockdown. They got 10 million people in Sweden, and instead, they opted for a strategy that sought to encourage social distancing through public information, cooperation, and something very unique, individual responsibility. There's a thought. Restaurants, Bars, public schools, libraries, all the rest of them, they remained open, but they had certain capacity limits that they all met. And the media, oh my God, they shrieked in outrage because Sweden wouldn't join in with the worldwide panic. And computer models were used to predict that Sweden's healthcare system would collapse and that millions were going to die. It never happened. The total number to date of COVID-19 deaths in Sweden stands at 5,700. That's nearly 90,000 less than the computer models had predicted. And the hospitals, they were never overrun. And the daily deaths in Sweden have slowed to a crawl. And by the way, the health agency over there reports no new ICU admissions. What the computer models and the authoritarians and the liberal media fail to realize is that people are capable of adjusting their behavior to threats without government coercion. Now, one could argue that uh, caution was warranted due to the fact that we really didn't know all that much about COVID-19. But this argument is far less persuasive when the costs of the lockdowns are factored in. The global recession, hundreds of millions of jobs lost, millions of businesses closed forever, historic social unrest, surging extreme poverty, historic widespread health deterioration, all of that, when you take it into account, I don't think it was worth it. Do you? And just think about how our numbers got so high here in the United States. You got to factor in Andrew Cuomo, Gretchen Whitmer, and Gavin Newsom, among many other governors who forced COVID-19 patients into nursing homes. What was that, huh? Well, either extreme incompetence or outright genocide. Yeah, I said it. Well, thanks for watching, and be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, share to your social media, and leave nasty comments below. Also, follow me on Twitch, where I do a podcast Monday through Friday at noon Pacific time. That's www.twitch.tv slash The Jazz McKay Show.